Z726X shuts off intermittently. Starts back up if you choke it. May run for a few minutes and it sputters and shuts off again. I've changed the plugs, fuel filter, air filter, oil filter, and oil. What is the complete model and serial number of your machine? Z726 XKW SN15685. Z726 XKW SN15685. Hi, we'll be glad to try to help you. The engine is not getting enough gas. This is almost always caused because the very small passages in the carburetor have become restricted or plugged. There is also a possibility that he float needle and seat have swollen and is not letting the float to let enough gas into the carburetor. In any case, most likely, the carburetor will need to be cleaned and rebuilt using a complete carburetor repair kit. Do not try to do it without the kit as you would most likely have to do it all over again. Also, make sure that you clean the gas tank and fuel line and replace the fuel filter. I would also suggest replacing the air filter as well. As a dirty air filter will cause running issues as well. Another thing that can cause this is if the gas cap is not letting air into the gas tank. Try running it with the gas cap loose and see if that helps. At the end of this post, I will share with you my very detailed carburetor and gasoline article. This will give you some very useful and helpful information. You may also consider sending a bonus if I have been helpful. If you cannot give me one of the highest ratings, then please do not rate me at all until we discuss this answer further and you are happy with my answer. Please do that for me as that is the only way I get paid for my time. Thank you. But it is best for you to hit the link for the rating. Here is that carburetor and gasoline information. Most likely you have some dirt or gum or varnish that is restricting the small passages inside the carburetor. This can also cause the carburetor to leak by getting some of the dirt between the float needle and the seat. In addition, it can eat the rubber and metal of the needle or seat. You might also have a pinhole in the float causing the float to sink. The float would have to be replaced. This is usually causes by leaving even a small amount of fuel in the unit while in storage. Even if it started a month and a half ago, the dirt and stuff will still be in the carburetor and will plug up the passages. I'm going to send you my very extensive fuel and carburetor information that should help you. Please make sure that you read the entire answer before you do anything. Here is that information. Most likely the problem you have is that the carburetor is restricted or plugged because of fuel that was left in the carburetor while it was stored. Fuel cannot be used if it is over 30 days old. Also this old fuel will not burn correctly and will cause other issues as well. In many cases the carburetor should be removed and cleaned and rebuilt with a new carburetor repair kit. Even if an engine is run dry, there will still be 10 to 12 drops of fuel left in the carburetor. This is what turns to gum and varnish and dirt and restricts the passages in the carburetor. Also keep in mind that even if this is a brand new unit, you can still have the same carburetor problem. This is because of the fuel that the factory puts into it when they are testing it. They then run it dry before shipping it but there is still some fuel in the carburetor. Here is my comprehensive carburetor and fuel answer that may give you some ideas. As engines sit or get older, fuel that is left in the carburetor can turn to gum and varnish and cause this and other problems. Also, any gasoline that was left in a gas can for a period of more than 30 days must be discarded because it also has begun to turn to varnish. 
Today's gasolines contain MTBE and or alcohol. Ethanol, they turn to junk and garbage very quickly. Alcohol is partially water, H2O. And they call it oxygenated fuels. It is the oxygen that breaks down the organic compounds in the fuel and turns the gas to garbage, gum and varnish, the fuels we had just a few years ago had no alcohol in it and would store for longer periods of time before going stale. And fuel stabilizers do almost nothing to prevent the fuel from going bad with the changes in today's fuels. Do not buy gas from the discount stations. The discount station gas does not have the additives needed to keep the fuel system clean and deteriorate much more quickly than good gas station gas. You may be getting fuel that's nearly stale right from the pump when buying from a discount station. Purchase your fuel from the well-known stations such as Shell, BP, Sunoco, Philips 66 etc. More than 70% of all of our repairs in our lawnmower business are due to this same issue. You most likely have dirt, gum, varnish dot etc. in your carburetor plugging up the small passageways and jets in the carburetor. The carburetor must be removed from the engine. Clean all parts with carburetor cleaner and blow out all the small holes and passageways with compressed air. Remove all of the non-metallic parts since the carburetor cleaner will cause them to be disfigured decompose and plug the carburetor as time goes on. Wash the carburetor cleaner off of the metal parts by washing them in warm, soapy water then rinsing with clean water. Dry them by blowing it off with compressed air. Make sure that all the passageways are blown dry before reassembling. Reassemble using a new carburetor rebuild kit. Do not try to reassemble without using a complete carburetor repair kit. You will just end up having to do the job again. Always clean the fuel tank and replace the fuel line when doing this repair or you may have to do it all over again. The inside of the fuel line disintegrates over time and these small pieces of rubber will plug up the carburetor too. Dirt and water from a dirty fuel tank will also plug up the carburetor. Find the model, type and serial or code numbers off of the engine and take them to your local dealer to get the carburetor repair kit. Or you can look up the parts from an online website such as www.partstree.com. If you do the work yourself, take pictures or at least make a drawing of where all the linkages, gaskets, and component parts go. Correct reassembly is critical. If the carburetor still doesn't work correctly, you may have to take it to someone who has an ultrasonic cleaning machine. This machine uses carb cleaner and ultrasonic vibrations to get the very small passageways clean when traditional methods fail. Here is where you can get an inexpensive ultrasonic cleaning machine http colon slash www.harborfreight.com slash catalog search slash result category equals and Q equals ultrasonic plus cleaner if you don't feel comfortable with this kind of repair I would suggest sending it to a reputable shop. Here is a carburetor rebuild process. First take several pictures of the carburetor and all of the linkage and hoses that are connected to it. This is to make sure that you will have a guide so that you can get everything reassembled correctly. First make sure that you have the correct complete carburetor repair kit. Now take special care when you take the carburetor apart to make sure that you watch and remember exactly how the gaskets come off. There are two types of carburetors. The float type carburetor and the diaphragm type carburetor. Below is the information for the float carburetor. The diaphragm carburetor is very similar except that you need to remove the diaphragms and replace them. They will also have a needle and sometimes a seat that need to be replaced as well. Remove the float pin. It just pushes out dot and remove the float. Carefully. So you can see how the float needle is attached. 
Some of them have a small wire spring holding it to the float. You will have to reinstall this spring when you reassemble the carburetor. Remove the float needle. Next dot remove the float valve seat. Look around the carburetor and see if it has a small idle adjustment needle. Remove this needle if it has one. You are now done disassembling the carb. Do not take anything else out of the carburetor. Get a good carburetor cleaner. Preferably with a small hose you can attach to the nozzle of the can. Spray the carb cleaner all over the outside of the carburetor. This will loosen the dirt on the outside while you clean the inside. Now spray the cleaner through every hole and nook and cranny you can find on the inside of the carburetor. When you are finished with the spray, blow all of the passageway clean with compressed air from an air compressor. Also blow all of the dirt from the outside of the carburetor. Next, take the entire carburetor to the kitchen sink. Okay, maybe it would be better to get a big bowl dot so you don't make your wife mad. And wash the entire carburetor with hot soapy dishwater. This is to make sure that all of the carburetor cleaner is completely washed from the carburetor. If it is not, you will deform the new gaskets and such that you install dot even if it is dry. Now rinse in clear water and then blow the carburetor dry with the compressed air again. Reassemble the carburetor using the identical parts out of the carburetor kit as you took out. Install the float seat, then install the float needle and the float in the same position that you took them out. Check the float level after it is installed, making sure that when the carburetor is upside down with the float in the up position, the float should be nearly level with the body of the carburetor. Now reinstall the bowl gaskets the same as you took them off. Then install the bowl nut with the small gasket under it. Reinstall the small idle needle if it had one. There, you are done. You may also consider sending a bonus if I have been helpful. If you cannot give me one of the highest ratings, then please do not rate me at all until we discuss this answer further and you are happy with my answer. Please do that for me as that is the only way I get paid for my time. Thank you. But it is best for you to hit the link for the rating. Hi, I am just reminding you of my answer. Please let me know how things work out. You may also consider sending a bonus if I have been helpful. Hi, I was just reminding you that you have received an answer for your question. You may also consider sending a bonus if I have been helpful. If you cannot give me one of the highest ratings, then please do not rate me at all until we discuss this answer further and you are happy with my answer. Please do that for me as that is the only way I get paid for my time. Thank you. But it is best for you to hit the link for the rating. If you have a home improvement or appliance question and want to chat with an expert now visit justanswer.com slash YTHI.